Now what we're after, what we want to see tonight is at the end of my text. The mysteries of God in Christ Jesus. Stewards of the mysteries of God in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is at the end of the text. But I want you to see. I want you to see how uh, the mysteries of God in Christ Jesus. How this will alter a man's perspective about a life. How mm -hmm. this will how this will change a man. How and, uh, and we're talking about a man of God. How he'll view things and how he'll work with others. I want you to see and be reminded how Paul, how he is set apart from everyone else of the world. Particularly, we see in this text mm -hmm. how that being a mission, being a steward of the mysteries of God, how this sets Paul apart from those who are preaching something else, mm -hmm. which is preaching a different agenda, mm -hmm. and to see how that it, 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 how ourselves, how we are really set apart, that the people of God are set apart from this world because we've been given something to handle and deal with this far above. The mm -hmm. earthly things. Amen. The saints have been given the mysteries of God in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. to deal with and to handle. And this, this is actually what sets us apart from this world, brethren. Mm -hmm. It's what sets our, our preaching apart from the other preaching that's mm -hmm. going on. Now, we could just jump right to this, uh, to this, to this uh, theme, but I want to go phrase by phrase. I want to mm -hmm. tear this particular scripture apart and let's look at Paul mm -hmm. and see how... Uh, how, what he means when he says, and let a man so account of us. Mm -hmm. Now this is another way of thing, another way of saying Paul is saying, uh, let a man think of us. Let a man consider this. Mm -hmm. And this is the way we got to do. Paul is calling a man to think. Yeah. I want you to think. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, uh, and so, let a man account of us in this matter. And, and what he's saying, we've been given the mysteries of God in Christ Jesus. So he can say something just a little bit different than other men who are who haven't been given these things. And you know, this is what we got to call men to do. we got to call men to think. And we got to call men to ponder and yeah. contemplate the things of God. Jesus told His, mm -hmm. uh, his hearers this. And, and He mm -hmm. said, Consider the lilies of the field how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Mm -hmm. He said, Consider the ravens. Mm -hmm. They sow not, neither do they reap. They have neither store houses nor barns. Mm -hmm. Jesus was calling men to study all these things yeah, uh -huh. and to look at them. He was telling men to look about you. Think about it and see, and see what's going on around you. Mm -hmm. Paul tells them here, he said, let a man so account of us. He's telling them right here the same thing. Paul used the word think. Now, the word think was really a big word in mm -hmm. Paul's uh, writings. Yeah. He used the word a lot. Mm -hmm. Three dozen times he'll use this word think. Yeah. Think. That's an important duty in the kingdom of God is to yeah. think. Yeah. The same apostle he tells the Philippians, you remember? He told them to think about something. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, just, pure, whatsoever things are lovely, good of report, there be any virtue in anything. Mm -hmm. Think mm -hmm. on these things. Paul said, the kingdom of God is demanding. Mm. The kingdom of God is demanding, mm. yeah. and the nature of spiritual life requires our undivided attention. Mm. It requires all our heart and all our mind. And both of these things together, see, they determine the direction in which we'll go. Mm -hmm. The heart being the center of our affections and desires. Amen. And the mind is what we use, is what we use to think mm. and to contemplate. So that, that to, together they work they work, see. Mm -hmm. And then they'll they'll just mm -hmm. Determine your course in life. Mm -hmm. That's why the mind is a renewed thing in Christ That's Jesus. Right. We, our mind has been renewed. It needs to be renewed so we can think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, we have to be able to manage in this world the way we live and the way we think. And today, as it pertains to our theme, God is doing something. And there's a certain manner to it. To mm -hmm. it. And there's a certain thinking that accompanies it what God is doing. God is going somewhere which has a certain direction to it. And everything makes sense to us when we think about what, what God has done, when we know what God has done and what He is doing. See, when we, when we think about it, all these things make sense. Mm -hmm. If we don't understand who Christ is and what He has done and what He's doing what He's going to do, well then, you know, just knowing the Scriptures is not enough, brother. Now mm -hmm. listen to what I'm saying. It, it, if you, you can have a, 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 a thorough knowledge of the Scriptures, mm -hmm. but if you don't know what God has done in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. and the direction in which 
God is going in Christ Jesus and it's just a lot of head knowledge. Mm -hmm. it, it's good head knowledge, but mm -hmm. it, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. Do you remember God visited His own city? Mm -hmm. His own people. And though they had this knowledge mm -hmm. of the coming Messiah, they didn't recognize Him. Yeah, that's right. Knowing the Scriptures through and through without being properly acquainted with the purpose of God, it really can get in your way. It really can. Mm -hmm. If you, if you know a lot of scriptures and I can quote a lot of texts, mm. well, it makes you think, it may, it, may make, it may make you think you know a lot. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Uh -huh. It'll make you, <laughs> it can actually make, and I've seen this happen, mm -hmm. it can make you where you can't listen to others. Yeah. You know, because you know so much already. Yeah. You see? <clears throat> There's a common sense that belongs to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. The saints have it. Mm. But we got to know about the purpose of God in Christ Jesus. So in order to have it. Be, mm. We are familiar with the Spirit of God, how He works in the saints, those with faith. It's a faith that's been given to the saints by God, yes. something God gives the saints. Amen. And it's, it concerns an understanding mm -hmm. of the way of God. It, it's a, the way the Spirit moves. Mm -hmm. It's the manner of God in the Spirit. When the Spirit speaks, those who are of a spiritual mind, they understand. Mm -hmm. and, and with this knowledge, so we, went, we make our way to the kingdom of God. We can make decisions and judgments accordingly. Because we have the we have the mind of the spirit, you see, mm -hmm. given to us. We can say, we can say, well, this is a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. Or that one that would not be a good thing to do. So yeah. we can make these kind of judgments. Yeah. And when Paul writes in a certain way, we have a spiritual insight and an understanding. It's a it's a particular intuition mm -hmm. that comes from the indwelling of the spirit. We, we can be like-minded with one another. We can be like-minded with Paul. It comes from having a renewed mind in Christ Jesus. The saints can expect to understand the direction and the, and the meaning of what Paul is writing. You see, because we're like-minded. We can say, well, well we, know where, we know where he's going with this. and I, I, can see, I can see what the apostle means here. Mm -hmm. Now, earthly influence, may I remind you, the thinking of this world now, it can, mis it can interfere with this kind yeah, of right. interaction with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. It can misdirect our kingdom conclusions, mm -hmm. in other words. Yeah. It can actually corrupt our end results with God yeah. and, and what He's trying to do in our lives. It's concerning His purpose, of course, His salvation and His Christ. Now, this is what Paul's having to deal with here, brother. That's the reason I went through all this. Mm -hmm. They have so much desire hear a new thing. Mm -hmm. They have. Desire to hear, to hear a new thing. Well, that's not new to us, is it? We, we got this going on today. Men who desire to hear a new thing. Yeah. And you would ask, who would do such a thing? Huh. Desire to, new, to hear a new thing from the world. After coming to the knowledge of God in Christ Jesus, well, who would want to hear a new thing? But see, it happens. Yeah. I mean, this is what the enemy can do. Yeah. You see? If we go over to that place, if we go over there in our minds to that place, that He can make us desire to hear a new thing. If, if we give our minds to what's going on in this world, in other words, is what I mean. Mm -hmm. Even in a religious world, if we give our mind a desire for a new thing. Well, in this particular group here in Corinth, mm -hmm. this new thing opened up the believers to all kinds of deception. Mm -hmm. Charlatans. Yeah. Had come, religious crooks had come yeah, in. That's right. And uh, they were introducing all kind of crazy thinking mm -hmm. to the brethren there. And they had actually moved the saints out of the domain of the Spirit, mm -hmm. you see. They had just like fell out of the, of the walk of the Spirit. Uh -huh. Now from the very beginning, this has been a tactic of Satan. You know, mm -hmm. to get men set. I, I need to get men away over here yeah. so I can talk to them. i got to get them away from where God is at so uh -huh. I can talk to them. Yeah, I'm going to give them a new thing to think about. Mm. Adam and Eve. He, yeah, that's I'm right. going to give Eve something new to think about. Think about this. So, new things that men come up with. Well, they sometimes want to bring them into the assembly of the saints. Mm. A lot of times, unfortunately, it's, it's a very leaders themselves to come in with these new ideas. Mm. And you know, that's why it's so important, brethren, that we be familiar with uh, the new thing that God has done in Christ Jesus. Yes. I mean, like personally familiar with mm -hmm. it, you mean? Uh, so then when this kind of thing happens, when the brother come in and they, they get up and they introduce some kind of new, 
new thing that we can examine it ourselves mm -hmm. and we, mm -hmm. we can we can ask some questions about it. Is it is this something God's made a big deal over? Mm -hmm. uh, does this really have anything to do with the new creation in Christ Jesus? Uh, or is this just a, some kind of thought? Mm -hmm. uh, so we got this kind of thing going on today where religious men, religious charlatans and, and, and men who uh, do these kind of things, they'll, they'll come in and they'll try to make a big thing over stuff that's not really emphasized in the scriptures. You got to be real careful about this kind of thing. So uh, Paul is, is is trying to talk to these brethren, and he's trying to actually he's trying to retrieve them. Mm -hmm. Now it's uh, it's a very dangerous thing. You can you can read what effect it had at Corinth. It's a very dangerous thing to listen with interest. Mm. A message that promotes itself as good news from God when, it, when it's different from what we receive from Christ Jesus mm -hmm. Amen. to begin with. Mm -hmm. I mean even if it's slightly mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. Very dangerous mm -hmm. to give yourself to these yeah. things. They're, they're all big messages. Okay? Mm -hmm. They're subtle. Mm -hmm. And they all become, a, I like to say, it, attractively packaged. Mm -hmm. But uh, it takes a discerning mind, okay, a thinking mind, and a heart which has an interest only in Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So remember these same brethren Paul calls carnal because they've left off their, in, their dependence on the Spirit mm -hmm. and they've entered a, a different yeah. place. Mm -hmm. And you know, Paul would say mm -hmm. something like this in verse 3. He would say something. It's a very, and because they've left the domain of the Spirit and entered into a different place which he calls the flesh, he would say in verse 3, it's a very small thing if I be judged by you. Mm -hmm. He didn't consider their judgment mm -hmm. a valid judgment, in other words. Now it was to, it was a policy, I, I say policy, but it was a it was a matter of Paul to remind the brethren of what God had done in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. You remember in Acts 20, mm -hmm. uh, Paul called all the elders together. He was leaving Ephesus. Mm -hmm. And he called them there. I, I think it may be on the beach there in the sand, he called all the elders, told them he was leaving. But he, he wanted to tell them something. He wanted to say that I take you to record this day. I'm mm. pure from the blood of all men. Mm. You know how I ministered among you. I held nothing back that was profitable. I declared unto you the whole counsel of God. Yeah. Now, see what Paul was doing. He was telling these brethren that he's been faithful to God. Mm. It, it really doesn't matter what men have to say. Yeah. Because I know I've been faithful to deliver mm -hmm. to you what God has given me to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, he's speaking to these brethren here in Ephesus with a different tone mm -hmm. than he's speaking with those in Car. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Okay, in Car, it's more of a rebuke, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a, it's a really small deal, uh, that a really small matter that I be judged of you. That's, mm -hmm. that's kind of a, a rebuke to them mm -hmm. because of where they were, but not to the elders in Ephesus. Mm -hmm. Okay, this was a, an instruction and comfort. But he's telling them the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brother, I've been faithful to God mm -hmm. to tell you what he's told He's reminding them, you know the truth, how, what I've, how, I've done, how I've done among you. Paul can say to all men, remember, remember how you began. Remember the word that you received in the yeah. very beginning. How the, the message was represented to you. He can bring them back to their remembrance. Mm -hmm. Go back to the beginning. Remember how it was and what you heard. Men have got to be able to do that. The brothers have got to be able to do that. They've got to be able to go back. Go back and review the things we've heard and received. Amen. we got to know that we've done the right thing. Mm -hmm. You see, go back to that message we first received so that when the time comes, we can have confidence to stand mm -hmm. because we, we remember what we responded to. We remember the Word mm -hmm. that was preached to us. If along the way we preferred ourselves and earthly things and we've lacked a clear vision and direction, we can go back to our beginning, you see. Mm -hmm. And we can remember. If it's necessary, we can go back there. We can remember what was preached. I can remember what was preached. Mm -hmm. I can remember what I, what, I, what I said yes to. Mm -hmm. Paul went on to say, I don't even rely on the judge of my own self. Yeah. Remember? Mm -hmm. But he that judged me is the Lord. Paul said, matter of fact, I'm calling all of you. I'm calling you, my brethren. I'm calling you and me to the judgment seat of God. Mm -hmm. Paul said this because after we've done the very best scrutiny of ourselves, 
as we examine ourselves the best we can, we rely on the judgment of God yeah. to look at us. Mm -hmm. It's because it's God who searches our hearts mm -hmm. and sees us. He's able to discern Amen. the hearts of men, yeah. our own hearts. Sometimes you just have to call everybody to the judgment seat of God, don't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to do this in your own mind, you know what I mean? You just have to turn it over to the one mm -hmm. who knows the hearts of men and let him rule over the situation. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, when some kind of crazy mess gets brought up, okay? Sometimes you just have to take that to God and let Him rule over it and make a decision. Amen. You know, this is where David started. He always started with himself, you see. Seems there be some unclean thing in me. And we asked the Lord, look me over through and through. Mm -hmm. uh, look at me. Lord, see if this thing be in me. Mm -hmm. see, if it's, see if it's me. And we do this because we know the subtle nature of this flesh. Amen. We don't want to be operating under some kind of like misguided notion mm -hmm. about yeah. ourselves. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's how we want to operate, you know? that's, that's how we want to, that's where Amen. our thinking or default to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we see something, we hear something that just isn't right. And a lot of times we just can't do anything about it. Yeah. We just can't do anything about it. So what do we do? We just call everybody to the judgment seat of God, don't we? Mm -hmm. In our own minds. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm just taking this thing to God. Is Amen. what I mean. Yeah. I'm just going to take this thing to God. Yeah. And let him, this is what Paul's doing, brother. Mm -hmm. He's taking this thing to God. I, I, don't, I really don't care that much about what you've got to say mm -hmm. about this, is what he's saying. Yeah. Because uh -huh. of where they were at. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but, but we're going to let God judge in this yeah. matter. Amen. We can do this because we know that God... It's doing a thorough work in men. Amen. I mean, you know, Brother Paul, t I mean, Brother Robert uh, touched on this. When God gets to, mm -hmm. when the Spirit of God gets to mm -hmm. with us, there won't be any defilement mm -hmm. in men. When we're, when we're presented to the Lord on that final day, there won't be any more defilement. Yeah, right. So we know that God is doing a thorough work. Amen. Now, there's a lot of things we can't do. There's a lot of things we can't change. It's a the way brethren think, the way brethren do. A lot of things we can't we can't do anything about that. So in a lot of cases, the Lord has to work these things out, and God can deal with this. And I'm so glad, brethren, and I know you are too, that we have God. It's God who searches our hearts. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to go to other right. men, do we? Amen. And, and ask Him, well, help me figure this out. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Because it's God's salvation. Mm -hmm. Because only God can do such a thing, you see. So we always, default, we always default to Him and we always go to Him. It's the most aggravating thing to me, really. Now, men want to take the salvation out of the hands of God. Now, men who can't even manage their own lives. Right. They want to manage the salvation of God. Uh -huh. I mean, if God didn't teach but one thing to the Jews, if they didn't give but one thing, yeah. they knew there was but one God, mm -hmm. okay, and that he was, a, he was God and judge of all the earth. Mm -hmm. They knew that. So here, let a man so count of us as the ministers of Christ mm -hmm. and stewards of the mysteries of God. So a man, let a man so count of us. How does Paul want the brethren to think about him then? What is Paul? How does he want them to think? Does he say, let a man account of us as an apostle of Jesus Christ? Did Paul say that? Mm -hmm. No, he didn't. Mm -hmm. He could have said it. Mm -hmm. Paul could have said, yeah. let a man account of me as an apostle of Jesus Christ. And maybe he could have told about the account in Damascus Road or something. Mm -hmm. He didn't do that. No. He addressed his letters many times mm -hmm. in this way, as an apostle of Jesus Christ. But then, you know, in this letter, this particular letter, he did address mm -hmm. himself as an apostle of Jesus Christ. But it was right that he did this, mm -hmm. right? It's an introductory yeah. uh, word to the brethren. No, it, it was an opening up of the letter to them. So he, it was proper and, and careful for him to identify himself as an apostle of Christ. But in other letters, particularly in defense of his apostleship, it was, it was important for Paul to defend himself as, as an apostle of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, he doesn't appeal to himself as an mm -hmm. apostle of Jesus Christ here. He doesn't call himself a chief apostle here, does he? Mm -hmm. Let a man take account of this, that we are ministers of Christ. Mm -hmm. 
That's what uh, God called Paul at the time he was Saul. That's what he called him when he was speaking to Ananias on the road there in Acts 9. Go in my way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. In Romans 15, Paul said that he had, he had received grace from God that I should be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of Christ. Actually, Paul's favorite word in reference to himself was minister. Whereof I am a minister. Yeah. It's like his favorite phrase, mm -hmm. actually. It's over and over and over and over when you start, when you take notice of it. You take away the mm -hmm. introductory greetings of his letters. I did this. Mm -hmm. Where he uses the word apostle to introduce his letters. Take them away. Exclude his references to the word from the Corinthians letters where he was forced to defend himself mm -hmm. as an apostle of Jesus. You take away all these, these, these places where he was actually using the word to defend his apostleship. And you'll find that Paul hardly ever mentions the fact that he was an apostle of Jesus. Matter of fact, Paul didn't consider himself a clergyman at all. Hmm. He did. He was a minister of Christ. It was it wasn't beneath Paul to get out and make some tents in order to provide for his needs. Yeah. You see, mm -hmm. Paul said, "Whereof I was made a minister." When Paul salutes the faith of the of the brother of the brother, he calls them faithful ministers. And I know, brother, here that you're you're well satisfied mm. with being a faithful minister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no greater distinction. You think about it a minute than being being known as a faithful minister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To admit, to be a minister of Christ, we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. of course, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. Not the minister of a so and so yeah. uh, <coughs> congregation or something, but the minister. We're talking about the minister of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. huh? We don't want to be just any kind of minister. Mm -hmm. We want to be a minister of the Lord. Yeah, we yeah. are ministers of Christ. Mm -hmm. If you are ministers of Christ, okay, God will minister to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God will minister to you. He will minister great, both grace to you and the hearers mm -hmm. when we are ministers of the Lord. Now, if you choose to be a minister, some other kind of minister, well, <clears throat> then you're on your own if you're not a minister of the Lord. I mean, if you're not a minister of the Lord and you want to be a, a, some kind of other minister, then you're on your own. Mm -hmm. that, that means you're going to have to go somewhere else for teaching. You might have to go to a college somewhere <laughs> and get some special education or things mm -hmm. like this if you're, if you're some other kind of minister. But we want to make sure our service is devoted to God and that we are ministers of Christ. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, them, he is a minister of Christ. Paul's pointing out to them, I'm not really your minister. Hmm. You see, I'm, I'm really not your minister. Yeah. I'm the Lord's minister. I'm, I'm the minister of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. All that I've done, mm -hmm. what I'm doing now, and what I will do in the future, is because I'm the Lord's minister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, we minister to one another. Mm -hmm. We are your servants for Christ's sake, mm -hmm. Paul said. We minister to another one, to one another, but because we are the Lord's ministers, we do. We faithfully minister. We faithfully minister because we're the Lord's ministers. When the push comes to shove, I know the brethren will do me good. Yeah. Not because I'm such a likable person, <laughs> but it's because they're the Lord's ministers. Amen. You see. Amen. If I offend one of the brethren by something I say, by my actions or something, they will forgive me mm. and they'll help me out. Because they're the Lord's ministers. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I really couldn't have any confidence if it was any other way. Yeah. That is if my brethren, uh, if they were ministering in someone else's name. Mm -hmm. Or if they, were, if they were ministering on the basis of the, some, uh, some other agenda. I, I couldn't have any confidence in that. But the whole complexion changes, you see, when we are the Lord's ministers. Yeah. If the elders in the modern church, mm -hmm. if they would have understood, it seems to me, if they would have understood what it means to be a minister of the Lord, and if the preachers and the teachers and days gone by, if they would have understood this, why, it, I think it would have changed a lot of things. Mm -hmm. When Paul used the word minister, it's likely that Paul had something in mind. Mm -hmm. he, I think he had this word oarsman in mind. Mm -hmm. One who rode the boat. Yeah. An, an oarsman. 
In this case, it was one of many who handled the oars, who rowed the boat. Mm -hmm. That's what the word means. More, more specifically, it was an under rowing too. It wasn't just a rowing, it was an under rowing. Paul so often used the word this way, under rowing. The men who rowed the ships in the ancient days, there was three levels of them, mm -hmm. three tiers. He was talking about the under rowing, the one on the bottom level. Mm -hmm. They were chained, often chained to their position. Mm -hmm. This is the word that Paul used. Ministers of God, under Roman. In this world, a minister of Christ is at the tail end. He's at the, the very bottom. Hmm. Paul said, woe to me if I preach not the gospel of Christ. Yeah. Paul was chained. It yeah. occurred to me, Paul was actually seeing himself as one who was chained hmm. to his ministry. Hmm. Yeah. Chained, chained as in he was constrained by the love of God. Mm -hmm. Woe to me if I preach not the gospel. Yeah. If, woe to me if I, if I do not minister to the people of God. The saints are not the, only the ministers mm -hmm. in the work of salvation. We're not the only ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. God has other ministers. Yes. For example, yeah. we know that the angels are, are ministering yeah, spirits. Right. Yeah. Matter of fact, when it comes down to it, everything God created is in service to Him. Isn't mm -hmm. it? Not, nobody's been left out in creation. Everything right. that God has created is in service to Him. Mm -hmm. There's not a person on the earth that's been left out. Everybody's within God's reach. Yes. Everybody's doing something for God. Whether they like it or not. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I can hardly let this thing go. This idea that men can choose about God and all that. I mean, it's really bothers me. That's some kind of crazy, that's some kind of crazy mess. It makes less and less sense to me that God would give this over to men to choose and make decisions about something that He's doing. You know, in 2 Timothy 2, God makes use of all the vessels in the house, mm -hmm. in the great house of God. That's right. Some are sanctified for the Master's use and prepared for every good work, and others they are not. Mm -hmm. We know this to be the case. We don't have all the specifics, mm -hmm. but there's a ministry of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and we want to be a part of that. Amen. We want to be a part of what He's doing. Actually, God He has given the work of salvation to Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. This ministry, this actual, this actual ministry that we're talking about, this has been put, put in Christ Jesus' hands, and mm -hmm. He has access to everything and everybody. Yeah. And at the end, brethren, when it's all over with, everyone's going to give an account mm -hmm. for Christ Jesus. Yeah. As stewards, they mm -hmm. will give an account. God will have worked it out this way. That all men were given some kind of service mm -hmm. to do. They were given something to do. Mm -hmm. And God is going to bring this up on the final day. Yeah. And He's going to He's going to say something like we can imagine that, oh, where is it at? I, what I gave yeah. you, where is it at? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what would you do with it? Yeah. He's going to want to know these things. Because see, everybody... Is in service to God. Yeah, that's right. Paul wanted the brethren to know, hey, I'm a minister in the service of Jesus Christ and what I'm doing, I'm doing for Christ Jesus. Paul seems to be, be asking by implication, those leaders that are among you, those who are among you, what, what are they doing? <clears throat> what are they doing? And, mm -hmm. and, and whose name are they doing it for? Yeah. I think he's wanting them to see this contrast. And the things that, that you're doing, the things that you're doing right now, mm -hmm. is the kingdom of God benefiting from it? Mm. Yeah. We just have to ask these kind of questions yeah, that's right. sometimes. Is, is what we're doing, is that adding? To, mm -hmm. is, is what they're doing down the street there, is that really adding to the purpose of God? Is that really benefiting the kingdom mm -hmm. of Christ? You have to ask these kind of questions. They'll help you sort out. How did Paul consider the ministry? His service to Christ. How did he regard it? Stewards of the mysteries of God. Yeah. Now Paul changes it up for a little bit right here. Ministers of Christ. Stewards of the mysteries of God. He changes it up a little bit. He's gone from, he's talked about being a minister of Christ. And now he's also a steward of God. He's added more deity to this verse. Yeah. You see we've got God and then we've got Christ. So he's made his, he's made he's added, uh, speaking as a man, he's added a little firepower, a little mm -hmm. more firepower okay. to this uh -huh. verse. He's yeah. called he's got he's talking about God, he's mm -hmm. talking about Christ mm -hmm. in, in the same verse here. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's added more potency yeah. to, mm -hmm. to the point he's, he's making here. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, he's a minister. 
And on the other hand, he's a steward. He's a, he's a minister to Christ, and he's a steward of God. Now, a servant is one who's an overseer. We know that. An overseer, he just tells you what kind of servant he is. Mm -hmm. He's still a servant. He's yeah. just an overseer. Yeah. The steward, he's still a minister. The steward stands in the, mm -hmm. the, steward stands in the master's place, actually. According to our scriptures, we learn this. The overseer, you remember Joseph? He was, a, he was an overseer of the house, of Potiphar's house. And although Joseph had a very high position as the overseer of Egypt, why, he was still a servant to Pharaoh. He still answered yeah, to right, Pharaoh. Yeah. He was responsible for a, a lot. He had a lot of authority. He was responsible for all the distribution of the things of Egypt. Mm -hmm. As a steward, That's you right. see. But he, he was still mm -hmm. you know, a servant of Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. He was a steward. And a steward, he had to give an account. Mm -hmm. You see, a steward is one who gives an account. Stewards of the mysteries of God. Stewards of the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ. The mysteries of God. The mysteries of God has already been stated. They are found in Christ Jesus. That's why we have these, that's why we have these two together in this verse. We are ministers of Christ. We are handling the mysteries of God. Mm -hmm. But they're found in Christ Jesus. Yeah, that's right. you see? So he, he couldn't really talk about these things without bringing Christ into Amen. it, you see. Because it's only Christ Jesus that these mysteries of God, these secret things mm -hmm. that are found, they're found in Him. The things of God concerning salvation, they're unknown, unknown by men, Sister Melissa said. We don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. But they're fulfilled in Christ Jesus. They're, he's, made, he's fulfilled these things. They're no longer secrets, brother. Mm -hmm. They're being made known to the saints. Mm -hmm. They are the mysteries of God hidden in Christ. Moses told the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 29, the secret things belong to God. Mm -hmm. And the things that are revealed belong to us. See? Yeah. So that's, that's where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the Gospel account, Jesus said, I speak in parables. Yeah. And, and so the word of the prophet might be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation That's of the right, world. Yeah. Right. And still there's more. There's still more to be made known, mm. brethren. Amen. Matter of fact, I don't know how long it will be before the Lord comes back. Mm. I want to think in my mind it's just right around the corner, That's but we right. don't know. And all along the way, you can expect things to be opened up and to mm -hmm. become more clear Amen. to you. You can expect that. Amen. But then when, when we finally come face to face, then it'll all come rushing in, and we'll just see right then how much there was mm. that we didn't know. Yeah. Jesus told the disciples as He prepared them for His leaving, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. Mm. But when the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you in all truth, for He shall not speak of Himself. But whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He will show you things to come. He will glorify me. Amen. You see? Mm. He will take what is mine and declare it to you. And so as the apostles went out among the brethren teaching and preaching, the Holy Spirit opened up the works of redemption in Christ Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is still doing that today, brother. Amen. I come from a, I come from a place where they don't believe that. Mm -hmm. huh? They don't believe that. But see, I'm here to tell you, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit has not stopped opening up these things of Christ Amen. Jesus Amen. and the people Amen. of God. He's got to, he's got to, because Christ, has done these things and he's, he's going to declare them to us. They are the profound truths of the gospel. They're things like Sister Miller said, we will never figure them out. Mm. We'd have never figured them out. That's right. We would have never looked at a tree mm -hmm. and, and, and figured it out that God had taken the sins of the world away. Yeah, that's right. uh -huh. We would have never, we would have never known these things. Uh -huh. No one ever known that God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world unto himself. Mm. And doing it in a way that the sins would not be charged against them. We would have never figured this out. Yeah. No man would ever ever thought about that God Himself would provide a righteousness for men. All other religions, yeah. you see, <laughs> they they got men. They yeah. got men trying to provide for their own acceptance of God. Uh -huh. See, God has done something we'd have never known. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brother, we'd have fell right in we'd have fell right in place with everybody else. Great is the mystery of godliness, the scripture says. Mm -hmm. Who would ever consider that God would come in the flesh mm -hmm. and the Word became flesh and dwelt yeah. among 
men. God and man on the earth, for in him dwelt all the fullness of God in bodily. Deity and man in one body. That God would give all God would give the authority of the divine life. Mm. And the and and and, and all the power of God to a man. We would never know that. Something that is impossible for us to understand. The secret of God. No man knoweth the Son but the Father. Mm -hmm. But then it's perfectly understood and received by faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That in itself is a great mystery. Yeah. All the revelation of God. Everything God has made known. Every, everything God has done. Well, we, we, we receive it without mm -hmm. question. By mm -hmm. faith. Yeah. Faith puts an end to all the questions, you see. Yeah. Faith puts it. We can tell the intellectual elitist and the game series, there's no problem with the deity of Christ. Mm -hmm. Quite the contrary. He's the answer to all men's problems. Yeah. The problem lies in your unbelief, you mm -hmm. see. Because with faith, we can just receive all these things right. that are being made, being made known about God that would be otherwise impossible for us to contemplate. Yeah. Or to consider, but we we gladly receive them without question. Mm -hmm. Everything makes sense, absolutely everything. When we know that in Christ, all the treasures yeah. of wisdom and knowledge are hidden. Mm -hmm. Paul said, "We are stewards of the mysteries of God." <clears throat> he was talking about the mysteries found in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Ephesians five, Paul uses Genesis two twenty four. There, there shall, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Paul mm -hmm. introduces us to the marvelous connection mm -hmm. between marriage of a man and a woman to that of the church in Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the most profound yeah. figures that's given us of that's Christ right, yeah. and the bride as the bride of Christ and the bridegroom. What a great and profound mystery that is yet to be unveiled to us mm -hmm. and to be understood. And completely, I mean. Revelation says, let me close with this. Mm. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, mm. and His wife had made herself ready. Yeah. The great mysteries of the eternal purpose of God that is to be unfolded in the ages to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul is the steward of these things. He's telling the brethren. Mm -hmm. so he personally brings them to the church of God Himself. Mm -hmm. he says, mysteries of God and the kingdom of God They are, they are being made known to us, brethren, because they belong to the people of God. Mm -hmm. They pertain to, to God's people. They're what, what God has done in Christ Jesus for His people. We need to know what they are. Now, in Christ Jesus, all these things can be revealed. It's an astonishing thing to consider here in Corinth, for example that an attitude had developed among them, and we talked about this, that the very one had come to bring them the mystery, the secret things, mm -hmm. that they had come to bring them to the, to the brother, Paul, is, a, is the same one that they, they stood against. Men had come in and turned their minds against Paul, the mm -hmm. very one yes. who had come to bring them mm -hmm. the secret things of God. And we can look back, brother, and we can see this this was not by accident that this right. was done. That this was right. This was like a, a, a purpose mm -hmm. orchestrated by the forces of evil mm -hmm. to turn the minds of the people against the very one who had come That's to right. open up the secret things of God. There's not one man, not one man has opened it, 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 it's a catalog this long mm -hmm. of the things that the secret the things that were secret that Paul has made known mm -hmm. to the brethren. And let me tell you, now, if Paul hadn't have brought these things, if, if, if Paul hadn't have done it, if he had not been faithful to what God had wanted him to do, these things would still be hidden from us. Mm -hmm. Yes. We don't have a right to say that God would raise somebody up. Mm -hmm. But what we're saying, if Paul had not opened these things up to us, they would still be hidden. Mm -hmm. So, brethren, this weekend, I, I, my prayer is that God will help us to see more clearly Help us to understand in, in a better life the things that Christ has done in redemption. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, well, they will be opened up in, in the mysteries of God. Mm -hmm. That all the way that we can really win and, and, and have victory in this mm -hmm. conflict with uh, the good and evil, so to speak, the, the old man and the new man, is to know what God has done in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm.